right, welcome to the Sci-Fi Express Lane. This is your host, writer, filmmaker, comic book creator, Jeff Carroll. I am here going to talk to you about or express myself about the movies. The movies. You know, uh, when you think of Sharknado, you think of Snakes on the Plane. Um, it's another good movie. I don't know if Tremors came out in the theaters, but everybody um, still watches Tremors. People always say, oh, well, B movies, it's a low budget movie, it's cheap, it's cheesy. You know, um, when you realize that Texas Chainsaw Massacre was not a B movie, it was an A movie. You know, it was actually. You know, made for a low budget, but it wasn't a B movie. How does that happen? What is a B movie? What are people talking about? B movies, you know? This movie came out in the theaters. This movie had, the movie I just saw had Jamie Foxx in it. I seen another B movie, Snakes on the Plane, with Samuel Jackson. These, is, these are A-list actors, right? It can't be a B movie with an A-list actor. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Yes, it can. Um, to understand what a B movie is and I say that because I got six B movies in the can um, I got two coming out my first movie was a B movie actually screened in the B movie film festival they had a B movie film festival years ago and um, my first movie Holla If I Kill You screened in it uh, my second movie Gold Digger Killer um, people don't really accept it as a B movie. That's fine. It's a hood classic, but it was patterned after uh, some grindhouse movies, okay, um, which are B movies as well. And um, of course, the Death Pledge. You'll know that. Um, and then I had the Black Nun. And so those are all B movies, right? Um, my next movies coming out are Conjuring, Baba, and Stay Out. Both of those are going to be B, are B movies as well. So what I say when I say B movies, right? I'm a B movie filmmaker. I should know. Um, B movies are generally horrors, but the overarching um, theme in a B movie is that it is exploitationary of the film genre, meaning sometimes it's over the top acting, right? Extra exaggerated lines. Some people might say it is um, cheesy acting, right? Or not necessarily good acting, but there's an element to it that the actors have to bring in a B movie that they don't always have to bring in a A movie. And why do I say A movie? It's not always about A and B actors. That is definitely a thing. And you know, this English language is crazy because, you know, we'll have... One word means five different things, but in this sense, an A movie is like a record. Think of, and, and many of y'all don't know what records are, but um, a record had two sides, and people bought it for the main record, but there wasn't there was another side. So rather than just give a person um, one record, sometimes they did the main record. And then they did the instrumental on the other side. That was later. But um, most of the time, they gave you another record on the other side to promote another artist, a breaking artist, to give you a different look at the artist coming out. And that was called the B-side, right? The B-side. And many times, the B-side record was better than the a side when i say better it is all subjective sometimes budget and the size of the artist doesn't always have to do that um doesn't mean something is better even if it's a better production sometimes it doesn't still make it better because this is all art so um in the movie theaters they started uh trying to get people to sit in the theaters longer right movies were sometimes 45 minutes to an hour. We're not dealing with, you know, four hour movies, two hour regular movies now. You know, these movies were feature length, which 
which was really just an hour movie. Hour and 15 minutes, 76 minutes. That's that's a thing of the 90s. Um, but in the early 60s, a lot of these movies weren't that long. So they wanted to keep people in the theaters. So they said, you know what? Let's see if we can get a little cheaper movie and put it um, before the uh, main movie. And that became the B movie. The B movie went before the A movie. Think of it also as like an opening act. So now when you go see an opening act and see Chris Brown or you see uh, uh, Beyonce, they tour with some opening acts. Many times those opening acts, their main goal is to get the crowd excited, get the energy flowing, um, not knock it out the box. You know, I've seen, uh, of course, you know, I work with comedians, so I've had to be careful who you put as an opening act, you know what I'm saying? Um, because sometimes the headliner will struggle, you know, or the opening act will do real good. And... Um, what do you call it? You had to be careful. And that's the same thing with film. You have these B-movies, you know, and they're ex high in concept, you know. And they come out, and next thing you know, people's like, it didn't make sense, but that one scene, you know what I'm saying? Or do you remember? They laughed hard, you know. And um, the A-movie requires a lot of concentration. So the B-movies didn't really require that much concentration. They were simple as eight-legged freaks coming for you. That was a that was a theater movie, but now in the 80s, and the, well, in the 90s and the 2000s, B-movies have taken off so much that um, the elements of B-movies are in mainstream theatrical released movies. But it doesn't mean it's not a B-movie because what a B-movie is, is something that is exploitative. So think of Death Proof with Quentin Tarantino or um, uh, Robert Rodriguez's uh, um, movie that went with it. I can't remember the, 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 uh, the zombie movie. You know, now they both tried to do like those uh, double feature movies. These were movies that were played four or five times. They, you know, they would be opening for different movies, you know? So it wasn't just, oh, they are opening for Superman or whatever the A movie is. They would go in two different theaters so the, the film would get ragged. They wasn't on any type of secondary market. So, you know, once they played out in the theaters, that was it. All you could see them was in the theaters. You know, cable wasn't even picking up um, B movies. So, you know, these B movies would come back year after year. So uh, the, the tape, uh, the film that they were uh, shown on would get raggedy. So they would fall apart and you would see like our big double feature. Like when I went to see double features or saw B movies, it was in um, 42nd Street, right? And we used to say, oh yeah, we're going to see 42nd Street. Everybody knew you could go see double features and they you know, start doing kung fu movies because kung fu movies were low budget. And sometimes even in the double features, they used to show two B movies. Just because, you know, they would be playing these, these cheesy, crappy movies or whatever they want to call it, high energy movies all day. And then in the, in the evening, around six o'clock, five, six o'clock, they started playing the A movies, the Hollywood movies. But during the day, you know, 42nd Street, these movie theaters was practically open 24 hours a day, you know? You can look up B-movies, and even porn comes up as B-movies, right? Even porn comes up, and you know porn is all about sensational, sensationalism. The titles, you know, are all sensationalized. But, you know, um, B-movies uh, over over the top. They know sometimes that they're not going to go to um, um, television, so they're not always PG. Um, uh, they're not, you know, so they may have uh, breasts falling out. They may have somebody naked that's not a perfect figure. Um, they may have really cheesy, regular language. You know, regular curses, you know what I'm saying? Before they got to Hollywood, you know, I'm pretty sure there was an MF thrown around. You N-words, you know, stuff that Hollywood wasn't saying, um, they were saying in B-movies, right? 
So you could see all of this uh, type of over the top fun stuff. So when I make my B movies, of course I'm making them in the 2000. B movies have evolved. You know B movies can go to television. Um, you know all these things. So you become a little sensitive when you're writing the movies of where you want where your movie can go. Shoot, Gold Digger Killer is a hood classic. It's 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 years old, right? Came back, came out in the 2000s, but 2000s we in 22 now. So um, it's still celebrated as a as a as a as a cult classic, a hood classic. And that's what happens with these B movies. The concept's so high, you have some really ridiculous kill scene um, or some over the top concept and people can't get it out of their heads. You know, I love the karate uh, kick that Rosario Dawson delivers in the end of Death Proof. I'm never gonna forget that. I mean, I could tell you all these different types of kill scenes from um, B movies that I saw uh, back in the days. You know, um, one of the ones that I'm really trying to get um, to come back uh, in one of my stories is um, Blue Sunshine. Oh my God, that sucker stuck with me. It's not gonna have the same magic, I know, uh, but they took some experimental LSD drug and 10 years later their hair fell out and they flipped out and turned into crazy people. That's a beautiful um, delayed reaction uh, zombie story, you know? Um, I wrote a story uh, called 40 Ounces of Death and it was one of my first four movies that I wrote. I wrote Holla If I Kill You, Gold Digger Killer, It Happened on Negro Mountain, and 40 Ounces of Death, right? Wrote all those years ago. Um, and 40 Ounces, I have not been able to, to do much more than adapt a few pages in a comic book. And it came out in my comic book first, Horror Streets, and then we redid it, and it came out in um, Mississippi Zombies. And um, that's just been, you know, a, a, a beautiful ride, but you know, it, it's not in the lowest budget B movie, so I can't really afford it. And I've been trying to maintain four cases of 40 ounces. I have to pay storage to my friends up north who have been saving these 40 ounces. And by the time I make the movie, the 40 ounces ain't even gonna be available. It's already a thing of the past, but the concept is amazing. So I can't wait to do it. Hopefully, I get to do it soon. It's like my next movie, if I get a big budget, a bigger budget, like any of these movies, um, blow up to the next level and, and make more than what I invested, I'm going for it. Um, but anyway, back to B-movies. Yeah, B-movies are ridiculous in that sense. Yes, sometimes they have uh, unexpected sex uh, scenes or really unexpected nudity. You go sex is a porn, um, but unexpected nudity, you know, uh, now you see all sex positions played out, you know, like in TV shows like True Blood and sex um, uh, th themes, you know, uh, but back in the days, you know, those that was risky. Hellraiser was risky, you know, you don't see Hellraiser on TV because Hellraiser is, uh, is, a, is a crosses the line. You know, but you know, you figure all these women on top, doggy style positions. You know, um, those were in B movies first. You know, somebody kicking somebody's head off and then falling off backwards. That was in B movie first. So you know, I might do some of the things that you see in B movies that that the A list movies took from B movies, but uh, especially the exaggerated kill scenes. The blood splatter that you see in TV shows like The Bo the Boys. All that comes from B-movies. This is not getting twisted. All right? So um, I just watched this movie, um, uh, Day Shift, with Jamie Foxx. And what I liked about it was the elements and the risks that they took in a movie that could have been A-list, considered A-list. But because it had so many um, B-movie qualities, the over-exaggerated fight scenes, the lack of attention to a tight script, it just makes it a B, a B movie. So I'm going to call it a B movie, and I gave it a higher rating than I would 
if it was an A movie because the B movie has different goals and I felt it tried to hit a lot of those goals. So anyway, um, I'm out of here. Uh, Jeff Carroll, leader in B movies, right? Not budget movies only, um, but leader in B movies. And um, like my page, like this video, subscribe and, and share it. And then also make some comments. All right. Thank you, fam. Peace.